Although the Constitution gave Congress the power to raise and support a temporary army, the framers feared a standing army after the Revolutionary War. The overriding purpose of the Second Amendment in guaranteeing the right of the people to keep and bear arms was to maintain a check on the standing army. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state meant ultimate power must be in the hands of the people. The Second Amendment is very specific about this. It is the right of the people, not the states, to keep and bear arms. Recently, the Supreme Court confirmed this view in the District of Columbia versus Heller, finding the right to keep and bear arms an individual right held by the people, not a collective right, as it's been interpreted previously. The court concluded, Americans have an individual right to possess a firearm unconnected with service in a militia and to use that arm for traditionally lawful purposes, such as self-defense within the home. Without a doubt, the Supreme Court decision is a victory. Portions of the court document affirm the facts. The individual right to self-defense. Individual rights shall not be infringed. The correct interpretation of a well-regulated militia. But other portions of that same court document contradict the facts. Like most rights, the Second Amendment is not unlimited. It is not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever, in any manner whatsoever, and for whatever purpose. Clearly, the controversy is not over. The decision speaks from both sides of the mouth and leaves the door wide open to misinterpretation. I think it opens it up for all kinds of regulations and registrations of guns that um, I, I think do not bode well for the future of the Second Amendment. Lower courts are likely to interpret the doublespeak and uphold prohibitions on carrying concealed weapons. Lower courts are likely to interpret the doublespeak and uphold laws imposing conditions and restrictions on the sale of firearms. Lower courts are likely to interpret the doublespeak and uphold bans on dangerous and unusual weapons, which could include any weapon the court wants it to be. The debate over the Second Amendment is far from over. Ultimately, we, the people, must decide what's more important, our unalienable rights or what the Supreme Court decides are our rights. So what is it every American should know? Gun control laws have been in existence for hundreds of years gun control infringes on individual rights that have been in existence for thousands of years. Gun control is necessary when one group of people wants to control or dominate another group of people. Gun control is usually popularized by myth. You know, we constantly hear these myths about gun control out there. There's a myth that gun control saves lives. I'm a perfect example of the fact that that isn't true. There's a myth that we'd be safer with fewer guns. We have to have guns in the right hands. There's a myth that countries with gun control laws have lower crime. There's a myth that carrying concealed weapons leads to higher crime and accident rates. It's not true. And registering guns, in my opinion, it's always the precursor to confiscation, which means that I can't protect myself or my family. There is much evidence that proves more guns in the hands of more law-abiding citizens actually deters crime and lowers the homicide rate. Registering guns does little to keep guns out of the hands of criminals. Many cities with the strictest gun control laws often have the highest crime rate per capita. When criminals have guns and law-abiding citizens are disarmed, who are the gun control laws really protecting? It's about rights, and as long as you are exercising your right in a responsible manner, I don't think we should be placing regulations upon how you exercise that right. 
we the people have the unalienable self-right to defend and protect ourselves. We the people have the unalienable individual right to pick up arms to secure a free state. We the people have the unalienable right to possess and own any weapon we choose. From muskets to military style weapons, the Second Amendment protects that right. One of the great things about the ability to keep and bear arms is that ultimately, as long as we have that ability, ultimately the people will have the power and make the decisions. You and 2A, good for the USA. to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed.